Who was the most powerful hut in galactic history? When you first think about this question, it's tempting to shoot for some obvious answers. There's Beldorion, a Jedi Knight who fell to the dark side and ruled a distant primitive world for over 400 years. His physical might combined with his abilities in the Force meant that he could probably defeat any other hut in a brawl. Then there are huts like Jabba de Silajic Tiur, who actually replaced the Grand Hut Council shortly after the Empire invaded Bespin. In essence, Jabba ruled hut space like a dictator, much like Palpatine ruled the Empire. He might have lost a battle in a gladiatorial arena against a hut like Beldorion, but Jabba surely wielded greater might through his sprawling organization. However, if we take an honest look at the history of the huts, there's one influential member of the species whose impact changed the future of the galaxy forever. Budila Hestilic Amura. So who was Budila? And what did he do that so greatly affected the Republic and Hut worlds? That's what we'll be talking about today. Budila lived thousands and thousands of years ago, well before the rise of Sidious's galactic empire, Darth Bane's great Sith reformations, and even millennia before Naga Sadow's first Sith campaigns against the Republic. Budila was born in the Kaimudan era, 15,000 years before the Battle of Yavin and about 10,000 years after the Republic was first formed. It's important to remember for the entirety of the Republic's existence, from the expansionist era in 25,000 BBY all the way to the New Republic, the Huts were often their enemies in war. While much of Republic history was defined by various periods of expansion and conflict with civilizations farther and farther outside of the core worlds, the Huts were defined in an opposite way. Although they also expanded their territories early in their history, at about the same time the Republic was founded, the huts of Budilla's time had just suffered a great cultural defeat, and they were forced to figure out how to survive after their once sprawling territories shrank to almost nothing. If you put yourself in the shoes of Budilla, just for a moment, you could see how overwhelming the obstacles of his time were. From around 25,200, which marked the fall of the Rakata, a powerful dark side species that ruled the galaxy with the power of the first hyperspace engines, the huts ruled a vast empire. Even when they were faced with a terrible rival, only a century into their existence, the Huts were able to prevail, and pushed Zim the Despo into defeat. That proud military tradition, and their almost unquestioned rule over other worlds, was a burden that the Huts of Budala's time couldn't quite figure out how to handle. After all, with the Great Hut cataclysms devastating their empire, how could they possibly hope to overt military power to force other worlds to obey them? Although termed with great cataclysms, the name itself is misleading. The truth of the matter was far more simple. Rival Hut clans grew jealous of each other, and instead of serving the best interest of the Hut Empire, they fought pitched battles against each other. And in the end, world after world was devastated, and even Varl, the original homeworld of Hut species, was stripped of its ability to sustain life. So, about the 15,000 BBY mark, we find Budala. He, along with the surviving clans of his species, were forced to find a new homeworld after their own had been destroyed. Hoping to create a new union like the very one that first made the Huts such a powerful empire in the first place, the most influential members of the Huts made a peace pact, which would eventually become the Grand Hut Council, the same exact organization that Jabba would serve on millennia later. The very idea of which was first brought up by Budala. Their primary mission was simple. Through their fellowship, they would try to resolve every conflict between Hut clans in a non-violent manner. Never again would they allow petty clan rivalries to threaten their holdings in the galaxy. After a while, the Huts decided to settle on a world known as Evokar, which was home to beautiful oceans, mountain ranges, but mostly swamps. The settlement of this new world is actually how Budala rose to prominence, and when he created a new philosophy that would become the guiding force for the Hut species for the next 15,000 years. By the time the Huts arrived on Evokar, the planet had already been inhabited for some time. The natives of the world, known as the Evokai, were a human-like species, but they were at a severe disadvantage when negotiating with the Huts. Their society wasn't nearly as developed as others in the galaxy, and when Budala and his kin offered to trade advanced technology and gadgets with the Evokai, the natives couldn't resist. So piece by piece, Budala cunningly bought vast tracts of land on the planet, until the Evokai had almost nothing left. By the time the Huts had taken over most of the planet, Budala had a revelation. This was much easier than war. Using commerce and coercion to get what you want didn't require massive fleets, and it certainly didn't risk the deaths of thousands of Huts. 
Almost overnight, Boodle helped the Huts acquire the world of Evokar and transform it into a new homeworld, Nalhada, the deep seat of underworld power that would draw criminals and bounty hunters of its dens for millennia. This is the planet we hear the twins speak of in the Book of Boba Fett. Shortly after, Boodle assembled his thoughts and gave his new philosophy a name, Kajidic. In essence, it was a set of rules or mandates that dictated how the Huts should live their new lives, and abandoned the ways that led them to the terrible Hut cataclysms just centuries earlier. As followers of the new Kajidic, the Huts were supposed to rule from the shadows. They would use money and indirect methods to gain power. Just as they had used unfavorable deals to take over Nalhada, the Huts would invade new worlds through commerce, subterfuge, and bounty hunters. This philosophy, along with Budala's creation of the Grand Hut Council, ultimately led to the Hut's longevity as a ruling power in the Outer Rim. By the time of Jabba's rule, the Kajidic was the very basis of Hut culture, and the very lens through which they viewed life. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on the most powerful and, in my opinion, important Hut in Hut history. Budala really paved the way for Jabba and everybody else. It's kind of like Darth Bane and his Rule of Two. Hope you guys enjoyed this backstory on Budala. Let me know who you want me to cover else from the Hut family, and I shall do so. Have a great rest of your day. Leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you. Always.